Hello, you're back with the Single Malt Review, and we're back today with another classic space side. Mm, yes, you certainly are, and yes, it certainly is a very, very classic space side this time. I thought it was about time for just a big old bottle of 10 year old Glen Grant because it's such a prevalent whiskey, um, it seemed a shame that we hadn't reviewed it. And um, also, I was getting sick of all these little miniatures we were doing. I thought we'd just go for the old, go for the old one liter, just in case we ran out. So, Glen Grant um, really leads not a great deal of an introduction to most people. It's one of the most popular whiskies in the world for various reasons. Italy probably being the um, biggest one. We'll do, I've given you a bit of a maxi pour there, but never mind. Never mind. That's the um, that's the good thing about a litre bottle. Some price we must pay. Um, very, very, very popular in Italy, and that's probably the reason they were recently bought, 2005, I think, by the Campari Company, mm. the um, sort of fairly behemoth spirits conglomerate over there. Who else do they own, um, Scotch-wise? Ooh, I believe, I believe, and this is going out on a bit of a, a limb, you've shoved me off here, Oops. I believe it's their only whiskey distillery, oh. because it's far and away the most popular brand in Italy, and they've sort of doubled down on that, and it's the one they wanted, that's one they got, hmm. that's one they probably paid a great deal of money for, so, now as far as I know, and I will check this and correct myself in the comments if we're uh, wrong. It's their only holding in Scotch whiskey. And right. they do move a hell of a lot of it in Italy. But it's not the Glen Grant 10 that we normally see around here. It's a very, very young Glen mm. Grant. And it's sort of posed at the, I don't know, people who would otherwise be drinking grappa and things like that. It's right. not really not really sold and not really drunk as an aged whiskey. It's more mm. of an appetite thing, I suppose. But either way, they love it over there in Italy. It's all over the place. You do get the occasional independently bottled Glen Grant, though, don't you? Mm, more than occasional. Oh. Glen Grant is a really good one to show up in independent bottles, and I'm so glad it does, because as uh, solid, as I'm sure we'll find out, that Glen Grant 10-year-old is, Old Glen Grant is one of the most sublimely drinkable whiskies, I think, on the entire mm. planet. It's a real, real guilty pleasure of mine, because it's, um, it's not a complex whisky, and it's not trying to be, but Goodness me, it can become just seductively delicious um, as it gets old. However, this is the 10. This is sort of where it begins. Although they've recently brought out their, um, what do they call it, Major's Reserve, which is their no-age statement one. I recommend the 10. Uh, we might have a look at their Major's Reserve sometime in the future. But for the, for the meantime, let's have, a look at the, uh, let's have a look at the proper one. That's a very sweet and floral nose. Mm, yes, it is. Alas, 40% uh, coloured, mm. chill filtered, rather, I guess you'd call it traditionally bottled, but whatever. Never mind. It's not a whiskey that's tremendously harmed mm. by any of those things, being um, less, less complex and more drinkable than most. Mm. But yes, very, very soft, lovely sort of vanillaed, honeyed, um, tremendously bourbon influenced nose for a tremendously bourbon influenced whiskey. There's almost. Um, almost no shadow of sherry maturation in the um, in the character of Glen Grant, and for a good reason. It's a real vehicle for bourbon maturation. Mm. The geraniums and nasturtiums, that sort of a thing. <sighs> I'm not mm. even absolutely sure what those plants are, but um, flowers. That way. Floral, certainly. Mm. Um, nasturtiums are among the edible flowers. Ah, yeah, so well, there spicy we go. flowers in a salad. Possibly. But now you now you mm. make me think of flowers. There is quite a good floral component there. I get a little honeysuckle, which is mm. not uncommon, and a little. Just in the background, I get that sort of lovely, sweet, buttery, subtle smell of gorse flower or wind mm. bushes, as they're called in uh, the UK. I, I don't know some lily of a valley. Only think of it because we have a giant lily of a valley outside our mm. home, and in spring, that's. Not only a haven for all bumblebees on earth, it also produces clouds of this rather unique, a fairly mild floral scent. Mm. It is a soft, but I think very surprisingly pungent whiskey. Mm. Um, there's no burn on there whatsoever, but quite a lot of flavour bursting out of it nonetheless. So on the palate, let's see. Where did it go? That just appeared on my tongue, then it vanished. That's extremely fleeting. That's... Curious. There's certainly, mm. I think, a greater breadth of character on the nose. I certainly wouldn't say there's mm. there's um, too little on the palate, but that's where the whiskey more contracts into its more primary mm. flavours, I think, which are very much, very much a sort of a light heather honey, a lot of vanilla, 
quite a bit of very, very gentle, fresh, fruity Speyside mm. character. And the big tell for Glen Grant, always for me, a very, very sweet almond on the finish. Mm. Yeah, some sweet floral stuff, a bit of honey, some more subtle fruit, and then, yeah, a little bit of nuttiness. But aside from that, it's just, um, it's making me think of like a semi-dry white wine or something. As you say, it might have had as an aperitif mm. ahead of a meal. It's... I've not often encountered a whiskey that just spends so little time lingering on your palate. I held some in my mouth then for a good long time just to get a feel for it, but it's still very elusive. Mm. Um, I think maybe less elusive and more um, fleeting is probably more the right yeah, word. Yeah, it's a it's a whiskey which sort of does its does a dance on the tongue and moves on quite mm. um, efficiently. It's a um, unabashedly a short finish. It would be the first one to tell you that and. As I said, I don't think it's complex whiskey by mm. any means. It has a certain style, and it really, really owns that style. It's mm. a very, very confident whiskey. It's not. Right. It's trying to be Glen Grant and nothing else. Mm. And Glen Grant is a enough of what it is, enough of an established taste and brand that that's really all it has to. That's the mark it has to hit, mm. um, and it does that, I think, fairly well. I do see what you mean though about the. Was Moorish deliciousness, how it's so tempting just to have more because mm. it's it's asking to be drunk, to drink in greater qualities. It feels like I'm drinking a um, not quite dessert wine. I'm actually I'm enjoying a full forty percent whiskey, so it's almost perilous. This is this is one of the whiskies which really doesn't I think suffer from its forty percent strength, mm. its chill filtration. And it's fairly youthful age. That isn't to say it wouldn't be even better without all of those things. It wouldn't be better with a um, 46, 15-year-old, uncoloured, unchilled, filtered version. I'd be fascinated to see. But um, they are very, very hard to find outside of some wantonly expensive mm. special editions from Glen Grant. However, um, older natural Glen Grants, as I said, do show up quite, quite prevalently in independent bottles. Um, signatory. Uh, which is a, um, which is one of the uh, bigger and I think very good independent bottlers. We haven't seen one on the show for a wee while, but um, that's due to my shopping habits more than anything else. They are quite um, quite good at bottling old Glen Grant, as are Caden Heads. Shows up quite often, so that's where I would go certainly for uh, older, more characterful Glen Grant. But um, it seems almost no matter where you get it. It's always in the same style, outside of a few um, quite uncommon sherry casks, which will show up. Um, Glen Grant is sort of Glen Grant the whole way through, and though it changes, it's always um, it's always sort of what it what it began. It just becomes even more sort of sultry and drinkable as it gets older, uh, mm -hmm. which can get pretty expensive if it's a uh, if it's a sort of lovely thirty year old bottle you've got there, and all you want to do is um, have another sip, which is Mm, certainly, uh, certainly, what Glen Grant does to me. Yeah, it's mild and genteel in a way, which is really quite well a not a shock to the senses, but it's certainly calling, making my senses question themselves. Mm. So, if you uh, say you're planning a meal and you were thinking of uh, yeah, Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc to go with it, but want to, you're sick of white wine, sub this in instead, and it will serve that same culinary niche to absolute perfection mm. I could see that that would be a worthwhile experiment mm. to make um, if that sounds a little quirky then just um, there is no I think no greater archetype for a di before dinner whiskey than this one mm. uh, this one will get anybody's taste buds going I think but not to belabor a fairly sensible simple whiskey with an overly long review I'll give it a score and this one I think is a really really solid 86 for mm. me what do you think well, I'll go a little lower because it's doing so few other things I don't want a whiskey to do. It's, um, it dances across the tongue and disappears down your throat, up your nose, um, with a degree of rapidity, which means it's hard to really savour it. It's enjoyable. I'm really liking this. I want to more of it. Mm. This one gets a 78 from me. Mm. It's very tasty. And it's just so quaffable because it's not really packing enough punch to just be sipped and savoured. Mm, yes, indeed. It's um, as whiskeys go. It's 
fairly versatile as well, mm. or at least as far as whether it will um, whether to have it neat or whether to have it maybe with something. In fact, um, the moment I finish this video, I'm going to take my uh, large pour and put an ice cube in it, and I'll do so with no guilt whatsoever because Glen Grand isn't isn't stuffy about that sort of mm. thing. It doesn't even taste like it should be stuffy about sort of that sort of thing. It um, it will love an ice cube just as much as you do on this increasingly warm mm. day as this is turning into. So anyway, there you are, Glen Grand ten year old, good old standby that we have now done our duty by. Mm. Uh, we will see what's in the back of the cupboard for a next one. In the meantime, keep safe. Slanger, this has been the Single Malt Review. Thank you, as always, for tuning in.